for, again, another time in your word. And, Father, I pray that you continue to speak through me. I pray, Father, that lives are changed through the messages that we give. And, Father, I pray that, that you give revelation to each one of us for our times. In Jesus' name we pray and we believe. Amen. Amen. It was interesting, something that Terry Mize, who I consider one of my papas in the faith and in ministry, and, but he posted something yesterday about Germany. He posted this, Dietrich Bonhoeffer. You guys are all shaking your head. You know this name. The great German pastor. Probably some movies about him. That would be interesting. Theologian, martyr, spy, was asked in 1943 how it was possible for the church to sit back and let Hitler seize absolute power. His firm answer was, it was the teaching of cheap grace. Wow. He said, cheap grace is the preaching of forgiveness without requiring repentance. You know, repentance is when you really know you've done wrong. You're just not, and, and then you ask for forgiveness. Some people just do it because they got caught and just want to go on. But it's a heart change. This is all about the heart. Baptism without church discipline. Are people really knowing why they're doing it? That they made a decision. I'm a follower of Jesus. I've made this decision. Communion without confession, just going through the motions. That's why we take the time to explain it each time we do it here. Absolution without personal confession. Everybody needs to have their own personal walk, their own personal confession, their own personal relationship and fellowship with God. Cheap grace is grace without discipleship. Grace, now listen to this, without the cross. How many times do people, well, you know, everybody's going to make it. God's a God of love. All religions lead to heaven. Grace without the cross. Grace without Jesus Christ. Wow. That's what he said. And then Terry posted, he said, we also live in a time and a culture that not only teaches cheap grace, but praises it. There needs to be some conviction. I didn't say condemnation, but there needs to be some conviction where we say, hey, this is wrong, and we need to get that, this out of our life, and we need to go forward as a witness for God. And at the same time, because we are people of no compromise, it also brings conviction to those that want to do wrong. But if the church is living compromised, then it brings no conviction. You understand? And it leaves, all, it leaves society up to sin and rebellion and all the evil ways that the devil wants to lead societies into. But Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego were these that said we're not going to compromise. Even though we come into Babylon with all these Chaldean gods that they're trying to shove down our throats and break our character and break our will, we're not going to compromise our relationship and our covenant that we have with our God. They were saved. They were saved and they held on to their convictions, regardless of what came. Let's go to Ezekiel 14.
And let's look at what they learned from Ezekiel. In Ezekiel 14 and verse 1, it says, Then came certain of the elders of Israel unto me, and set before me. Right here, Ezekiel is referring to this time when these leaders in Israel, those that were hungry for the word, those were st that there was still, you know, those that wanted to know the scriptures, that wanted to know the word, and Daniel was one of those. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego probably were in that group. But it says, then came certain of the elders, so not everybody came, but certain of the elders of Israel unto me and set before me. Now, Ezekiel knew what was going on, and he knew that they were in these judgments. And look what he says. And the word of the Lord, verse 2, Ezekiel 14, verse 2. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, these men have set up, look at this, their idols in their heart. So we got a heart problem here. You understand? Meaning, and this heart here is a reference to their will. And their will was, we're going to worship these idols no matter what. It doesn't matter what the Word of God says. It doesn't matter what the prophet says. It doesn't matter what the men of God say. It does not matter. We like our idols. We like our ways. And we're not going to change. That was a heart issue. And Ezekiel confronted it. And, 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 and this is what was going on in Israel before this captivity. It says... And put the stumbling block. So their hardness was also creating problems for other people. That's why it's important that we are a witness. Now Jesus is the perfect one. You understand, but we still have a responsibility to be people of character. The stumbling block of their iniquity before their face, should I, now, now look at what he says, should I be inquired at all by them? They were supposed to be going to the men of God. You understand? It ought to be that people go to church. Amen. It ought to be that people go to the Word. It ought to be that people go to people that know the Word. In the Old Testament, they had prophets and they were responsible to, to, to bring the scriptures, to bring the word of God. In the New Testament, God gives apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers and, and the, these five-fold ministry gifts, their main responsibility is to study the word. Not secular psychology books, the word. That's their number one priority, is to know this Word, to help people to know the Word. The church is supposed to be a place that is full of the Word, not disco lights, and hot dog roasts, and hamburger fest to draw the people. The most important thing in the church is the Word of God, the full counsel of God's Word. That's why the devil tries to come in and dumb down the church. He tries to dumb down the universities and the school system, and then he tries to come in and dumb down the church. Well, that's an old book. We're a new generation with new revelation. How could we trust a book that was written almost 2,000 years ago? I'm telling you what, we got the author of the Bible in us, and this is a sure word. And it'll answer every single problem in society. Amen. 
Do you understand? So, so Ezekiel says, should I be inquired at all? They stopped going to the men of God. Should I be inquired of, at all by them? What, well, what does the Word of God say today? That's why the Word of God says not to forsake the assembling together of believers, for believers to come together. So, so that's the responsibility of the believer. But then, you also have the responsibility of the minister. And the responsibility of the minister is to stay in the Word and to stay with the Word. And Ezekiel is going to deal with that issue down in verse 10. Because there are some crazy preachers out there too. Really crazy. If you stand up and you preach that homosexuality is okay and it's, it, you know, it's, it's, it's not the love of God to tell a man and a man that, uh, that, that, um, that they can't uh, be married and live together, you know, that's not love and you're a minister and you say that, it's a violation of the word. Absolutely. You understand? It's a violation of the word when you tell people it's okay to go out there and smoke marijuana and get high. The word says to be not drunk with wine. Why does it say that? So you don't give your soul over to something else. You want to be in control of your senses. Well, you just don't want to offend anybody. Jesus offended a lot of people. But he spoke the truth. If you don't work, you don't eat. It's not, you know, it's, it's, life is not handouts. And, and in, God, in, in the kingdom of God, there are rewards for work. There are some people in heaven, they're going to get more than others. Because of what they did here. You know, it's not just, well, everybody, whether you work or not, everybody gets the same. You, you see what I'm saying? We go back to the Word, and the Word of God helps us to make all the decisions in life. We save ourselves for our marriage partner. So we don't give our soul away to 500 people. I mean, I, you know, there was, I, I saw this, this t-shirt of this woman. I've had 27 abortions. Proudly, oh my God, can you imagine what the soul in that person? To be that full of pride, but I'm going to tell you something. Somebody like that is totally messed up inside. That you've murdered 27 babies at your own pleasure. Do you, do you, understand, do you understand what I'm talking about tonight? And, and see, the Word of God tells us that a child is formed on the inside. That's where, that's where life starts. At the time of conception. That's what the Word teaches. I, I, I knew you in the womb. Paul said, I was called to be an apostle from my mother's womb. John the Baptist, he leaped in the womb. There was life there. The Word of God says not to pray to Mary. There, there's no place where people pray to Mary. She had to get born again like everybody else. She had to get filled with the Holy Ghost like everybody else. She had to go out and witness to people like everybody else. You understand? That was her call. That was her ministry. If you don't work, you don't eat. God doesn't bless laziness. You give your tithes because you say, God, I trust you. You, you see what I'm saying? On and on. We go back to the Word. The, the Word says a, a, a soft answer turns away strife. There's, there's a way to even avoid a big major blowout. On the other hand, there's a time to roar. I'll tell you something. When Jesus drove those money changers out of the temple, He wasn't saying, okay, come on, you guys, get out of here. The, the Word says there is a time to be angry, and it says to be angry and sin not. It's, the Word covers everything. 
And so, and, and in, in, in this situation, the nation of Israel, they were involved. They were involved in sacrificing their children on, on altars of fire. They were worshiping forbidden gods. They were, they, they, they were uh, practicing uh, much sexual perversion in their idolatry. Theft and stealing and all this kind of stuff. I mean, we're going to get into it because Daniel gets into it. And Ezekiel said, isn't there anybody that comes to me? I know the word. I'm here to give the word. I'm here to, 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 to keep the post. But at this time, there were very few in the whole nation wasn't a big Bible school. wasn't a big group of people. But there was one that was hungry. And said, I'm listening to you, man of God. I'm listening to you. Teach me that word. Teach me the ways of God. Show me it in the scriptures. Can you imagine being the one that was able to put that into Daniel? And knowing you had seed in that young man's heart. Wow. That God used to win two kings to the Lord. And help a nation to be preserved that it could go back. And rebuild in Jerusalem and come out of captivity and live in the land. My goodness. We cannot forget this. Don't think small with God. So it says, verse 4, Therefore speak unto them, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God. Every man of the house of Israel that setteth up his idols in his heart and put at the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face, and cometh to the prophet, I the Lord will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols. Did you know that's also found in the New Testament in the book of Romans? There are times that people have gone too far. And there are times in society people have gone too far. God gives chance, 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 but then it's over. And that's why we pray, but we don't know what all is going to happen with everybody. Not everybody's going to get saved. Forget it. There are going to be some people, they're going to be given chance and chance and chance and chance. And then it's it's done. You see what I'm saying? I wished it wasn't that way, but that's the truth. And sometimes people have to be taken out like Hitler so that other people can live. Do you understand? I don't know if he got saved or not. He could have on his last breath, but I will tell you this. That somebody like that that continues to murder innocent people has to be taken out. Because they have yielded to a wrong spirit and they're not willing to get rid of it. And it's the same way with some of those terrorists that have been taken out in, in our time as well. They've come to that point that they're so darkened in their conscience... That there's no way back. And that can happen. And this is what he's saying. I'm going to leave them to the destruction of their idols. Remember with Moses? Who are you going to serve? And they had to make a decision. And there were some that made it and some that didn't. So, that I may 
take the house of Israel in their own heart because they are all estranged from me through their idols. That word estranged, it means adultery or prostitution. God calls idol worship adultery, prostitution. It's interesting because many times the two go together. Therefore, say in the house of Israel. So, so can you see this? Ezekiel's speaking pretty direct here. Therefore, say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, Repent, and turn yourselves from your idols, and turn away your faces from all your abominations. For every one of the house of Israel or of the strangers that sojourneth in Israel, which separated himself from me and set it up his idols in his heart. We got to have a heart change here. Even in the Old Testament, before they were born again, they still could have a heart change as far as a will of who they were going to serve and who they didn't serve. You understand? It was still there. There's always been an issue of the will here. You're going to obey the Word of God? You're going to do the Word of God? You're going to, going, to, going to follow the ways of God or not? There was saved people in the Old Testament and unsaved people in the Old Testament. There were people in the Old Testament that believed in the coming Redeemer. There were people that didn't believe in, in Jesus' coming, didn't believe in the Word of God. But for Israel, the Word of God, the, the, this, this was what they started with. This was their foundation, and they were supposed to be a light to the other nations. You understand? For every one of the house of Israel or, or of the stranger that sojourneth in Israel, which separated himself from me and setteth up his idols in his heart and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face. See, they had a responsibility to be a witness here. And cometh to a prophet to inquire of him concerning me, I the Lord, I. That's when God comes in. When there isn't a repentance, I, the Lord, will answer him by myself. And that's where these hands were slowly taken off. A little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And Ezekiel knew it. And I will set my face against that man. And will make him a sign and a proverb... And I will cut him off from the midst of my people. Hello, that's why some people go early. They were given a chance. But when they continue to lead people in the wrong direction over and over and over into deep sin, something has to happen here. And I will cut him off from the midst of my people, and you shall know that I am the Lord. It's going to come back. God's going to get the final say here. And it's the same way today. He's going to get the, the last word here. The globalist is not God. The Antichrist is not God. The Antichrist system is not the kingdom of God system. And it will crash. It will crumble. But there's one that won't and never will. Hallelujah. And we're in it. It's called the kingdom of God. It's called knowing Jesus Christ as the Lord of Lords. Jesus Christ as the King of Kings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And verse 9, and if the prophet be deceived, then we got another problem. Or we could say today, if the church be deceived, if the church doesn't stay with the word, if the church doesn't stay with the ways of God, when he has spoken a thing, I, the Lord, have deceived the prophet, and I will stretch out my hand. That's what people are going to think. What's going on here? upon him, and will destroy him in the midst of my people Israel. Because God, he's going to protect the integrity of his word. 
No minister is above the word of God. No prophet is above the word of God. I don't care how big a prophet you call yourself. If you get away from the word of God, you're in the wrong direction. None of us are above the word of God. None of us are above the truth of God's word. If the word says it's wrong, it's wrong. If the word says it's right, it's right. So it's a good idea to go with the word. It's this word that works. I say it all the time. You know, check out when you're hearing messages. You check it out for yourself. You don't just say, well, Mark Irvin or such and such said. You know it in the word for yourself. You got that responsibility and I have that responsibility. Everything goes back to the word. And we, you know, and, and, and people that are seeking and want to stay with the truth, they're going to find it. When the heart is right, it's a rebellious heart. Well, I don't care what the word says. I'm going to do it my way. That's when you get into problems. So think about it. Ezekiel saying this. He's a prophet, and he says, And if the prophet be deceived when he has spoken a thing, I, the Lord, have to see the prophet. That's what it looks like. People are wondering, hey, what's going on here? There's supposed to be a man of God here. They're supposed to know the way of God. It's not that the Lord deceived the prophet. It's that the people think the way the prophet thinks because the prophet didn't stay with the word. You understand? I want to stay with the word. And I want to stay with people that stay with the word. I mean, I, I have to tell you, and I'm not going to name any names, but my wife and I, you know, there, there's, a, there's a ministry today that, that we, we have followed before, much before, and came out in a totally different direction. And we looked and we said, what happened here? What happened here? What happened here? And it wasn't, you know, we didn't call somebody, somebody, we didn't call somebody and, and that person told us, da da da. We saw the fruit of what they began to teach. And then I asked a friend about it. I said, yeah, they've gone to the dark side right now. I said, my goodness, I cannot believe this. Why? They left the post. You got to stay with the word. I don't care how big you are. I don't care how much money you make. I don't care how much success you have. If you leave the word, you leave the standard. And it's the minister's responsibility. And the bigger microphone that you have, the, 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 the bigger you can lead people in the right direction or the wrong direction. So there's a people's responsibility here and there's a minister's. Both have a responsibility to stay with the word. And I hope they come back. I hope they come back. If they don't, I feel, I feel for that ministry. And I'm not going to name any names because I'm, I'm hoping they come back. I'm hoping they got to wake up really quick. But the word says, even the elect shall be deceived. If you don't stay with the word, you will be deceived. And this is why it's important that we don't just focus on one topic. We need a good rounding of everything. The Word says it in the last days that people are going to heap to themselves uh, teachy, teachers having itching ears. They just want to hear what they want. And that's dangerous. So I want you to understand this is what's going on. This is why they went into captivity. And Ezekiel warned about it. You're learning some tonight. Yeah. 
And it's, you know, and it's not that we're going to be 100% in all of our messages. We're all growing. We're all learning. But we always want that word to be a check and a balance. And some, there's some issues like, you know, well, the devil doesn't understand me when I speak in tongues. Some people believe that. Some people say, yes, he does, because the word says you speak in tongues of men and of angels. And there's all kinds of opinions. Does it matter? Just speak in tongues. <laughs> you know, some of these little tiny details, it's not so important. But when it comes to the cross and redemption and Jesus and the commands of God, and they're clear. I mean, there was a church, in, in church history, there was this big argument about, because in, in the States, they, well, it's here too, they build these churches, and they have points on the top. It's called a steeple. Maybe Karen heard it. But, but many of the older churches in the States, they, 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 they have this uh, thing on the top of the church, it goes up into a point. And their idea was that keeps the devil out of the church. <laughs> That's not in the Bible. <laughs> and then there was a big argument about how many demons can be on the, like the pen of a needle. I, 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 it's, you see what I'm saying? Let's get, let's stay with the word. <laughs> I mean, with, with the faith teaching, there was a time, you know, where you can believe God for not to have a baby, and, and uh, you can have sex and just believe God that you don't have it. No, you, you do the thing, you're going to end up pregnant. It's a principle. <laughs> you know, or I, I believe for the calories to go. No, if you eat chocolate the whole day, there's, you're going to be loaded. <laughs> I saw a guy one time go into a laundromat. Jesus' name, come out of my clothes. Wrinkles now. <laughs> really? I, you, that's, you gotta go back to the word. <laughs> There's common sense here stuff. Oh my goodness. But see, it's the same way when our kids go to school and they try to jam, to, to cram evolution down their throat, they need to be able to stand up and say, no, I didn't come from a monkey. No. <laughs> and yes, I do believe in the Big Bang. God said. <laughs> it's that simple. <laughs> and even today, science has proven that everything comes from sound. Well, I know where the sound came from. I mean, the, Bi the Bible's loaded with science. Even the astronauts, they have to go back to the Bible before they send the rockets up into outer space on the timing issue. Because it goes back to those days when the sun stood still. It's there in the calculations. Yeah. I, the Lord, have deceived... That's what they're going to think. That prophet, and I will stretch out my hand upon him and will destroy him from the midst of my people, Israel. Why? Because God is going to protect his word. And they shall bear the punishment of their iniquity, and the punishment of the prophet shall be even as the punishment of him that seeketh unto him. Well, in the New Testament, the Bible says that ministers are going to, they're going to be judged by a higher standard. Why? Because they're supposed to be leaders that are setting examples. Are we perfect? Absolutely not. But we ought to be setting examples. It's a sad thing when the pastor's more carnal than the people. You understand? You're supposed to be leading here and going forward. It's a sad thing when the people know more of the Word than the pastor. 
That's a sad thing. It's a sad thing when people, they, they get all kinds of opinions, but they don't get much scripture. That's a sad thing. I've been in that place where you don't need to bring your Bible. Just You don't even need to open your Bible. Just sit there and listen to me. No, you open that Bible. And you check out in that word. You understand? Oh, let's keep looking here. This is, this is amazing. So, verse 11. Let me get over there. I'm, I'm reading the scriptures off my notes, but let me get over there. It says... That the house of Israel may go no more astray. Hello, there it is. Go back to the word. Hello, men of God, lead people in the word. That the house of Israel may go no more astray from me, neither be polluted anymore with all their transgressions, but that they may be my people and I may be their God, saith the Lord God. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, now here it is, when the land sinneth against me. He's going back to the issue of the land, where they did not continue to, pl or, or they continued to plant in the land when they should have let it rest. It wasn't the land that was sinning, it was the people that was sinning, and they were not leaving the land rest. That was the sin, that was the compromise. So Ezekiel goes back to their first step of compromise. You understand? By trespassing grievously, then will I stretch out my hand upon it. It will break the staff of the bread thereof. There you go. There's another one of those judgments. Famine. You understand? And then as you go through, you have all these different judgments. But jump down to verse 20 that are mentioned. But I like this. Oh, I like what Ezekiel said. Again, Ezekiel goes back to the Word and to people that didn't compromise. Verse 20. Though Noah, there's a man that didn't compromise. Hallelujah. But look what else. Daniel. Can you imagine Ezekiel? He's moving along in the class. And he mentions Noah. And he mentions Job. And he says, Daniel. <laughs> he knows he's not going to compromise. And all those people in class, he pulls him out and says, And you, Daniel. Noah didn't compromise. Noah and his family were saved. Job compromised with fear, but he recovered. I think the history of Job is, I, I think, I'm not sure. You'd have to study it out. But I think it was about a year. And then later on, he prayed for his friends, and he got back on track, and he got everything back, and more. Wow. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? And isn't that amazing? Though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver... Neither son nor daughter they shall, but deliver their own souls by their, what? Their righteousness or their standing and saying, I'm not going to compromise. I'm going to stay faithful to my commitment to God. Why were they delivered? No compromise. I'm not saying they did it perfect all the time. 
But their heart was right. And their heart was to do right. You understand? And we see that. They didn't bow when the king wanted them to bow and worship him. When Nebuchadnezzar made this big statue and said, bow. They didn't compromise when the king wanted them to eat food that was sacrificed to idols. And they knew it. And they knew it would ruin their witness. Because they knew that everybody ate that food. It was part of their worship. You understand? But can you imagine? I mean... Ezekiel's there and he's talking about all these things and he's talking about all the condition of Israel. And, and you even see this. Look up here in verse 14. It says, Though these three men, he says, Noah, Daniel, and Job. He puts Daniel in the category with Noah and Job. He's in class. He's got all these other people there. He's talking about not compromising. He's talking about the condition of the nation. He's talking about why they've gone through what they've gone through because of the compromise. And he says, and, and they, they're thinking, oh, oh yeah, Noah. Yeah, we know Noah. Man, that was the time of the flood. And that was a time Noah stood and everybody went against him. But he said, no, we're not going to compromise. I, I, I believe God. And Job, they know about Job, and they know what happened to him. But right in the middle, he's got Daniel sandwiched in there. And there's another one, and he's in class today. Daniel. <laughs> That's the kind of people we want to be. We don't just follow the crowd. Just because every, you know, I, I, I had somebody come in today and try to get me to do something. I'll tell you that right now. And I told him I'm not going to do it. I can tell you what it is. They wanted to come in here and take a bunch of pictures for Google. And I looked at the man and I said, no. I said, you guys have been censoring a bunch of people. And you think I'm going to let you come in here and take a bunch of pictures of our place? I said, no. And he removed his thing. He said, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I know you're ta there's a lot of people mad about that right now. But then listen to what he said. He said, you know, there's a statement here. If you can't beat them, join them. I said, not me. He said, it'll make you more money. It'll make you more money. Not me. Yeah, this is the kind of people we got to be. Yes, amen. Amen. <laughs> this is the kind of people we got to be. Amen. These guys are in big trouble right now. Facebook is in big trouble right now. And I pray the hammer comes down. And he said, yeah, but you know, Google, they're way ahead. They're 20 years ahead of all these other I said, I don't care. I'm not in this for money. Do you understand? I'm in this for character and for God. And he has to build the church here and the business here, not Google. And not the devil's Babylonian system. I told him straight. I told him a love, but I told him straight. And, and he agreed with me. He said, but it's my job. Think about that. He said, it's my job. He knows what's going on, but he said, it's my job. Think about that. He knows what's going on. He knows it's not all right, but he's afraid to lose his job. And that's not the kind of people we need in leadership in our society. We need the people that are willing to stand up and say, I don't care how much money I make. I'm going to be a person of character for people. Amen. I care about people. Yes. Yeah. 
I've had several situations in, that my, in my life like that where I said no. And he knew I wasn't happy either. Because God's not happy about it. He don't like people being ripped off innocently. Hallelujah. How about being a Daniel? That's a great example in the Old Testament, but you know what? For you and I, we're sons and daughters of God. It's even more. It's even greater for us. Hallelujah. You don't compromise to be successful. You don't compromise to make it. And this was the whole reason that they brought all of these Israelites into this school. They wanted to break down their will so they could get them to completely compromise all conviction of anything that they had learned in their childhood about God was gone. And completely become a Babylonian. I have a passion for what is right. And that's the truth. I'm not perfect. And you guys aren't either. But, but when I see it, I want to make a change here. I don't know. I tell you, I felt good when he left. Not only for, for, for me, but for him. Because it gave him something else to think about. And I told him straight. I said, not me. When he said, well, he said, you know, if you can't beat them, join them. That's what he said. And there's a fee involved with it too. That's what he said. I said, well, I'm not joining. He said, no, we're not going to do that. We have a church here. I'm not going to put this church in a system of compromise, you understand? Hallelujah. And I told him straight, I'm looking for another platform too. There's other platforms out there than Google. I'm not saying that we should all just jump and leave Facebook. I think we need to be a voice out there in the world too. But I think we need to be looking for other platforms. Because I'm going to tell you something, they're going to do everything they can to shut the whole thing down and bring everybody into one way that they totally have to depend on that internet. And that's where it's headed. You understand? We're living in the last days. All right, well, I believe we're done for tonight. Tell your neighbor, no compromise. Hallelujah. Tell your other neighbor, no compromise. You know, I, 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 and I really believe this. I believe this is part of the prosperity of the church. Because it's going to come to the point in the world out there, they don't trust each other. But when we are a Christian and they know our character, and we, you know, that's why we should be the best workers. That's why we shouldn't be, you know, doing stupid stuff when they're paying us to do something else. You know, we ought to be the best. Character counts. Hallelujah. Oh, I got to get off this. Lord, I just thank you tonight. I thank you tonight. 
Lord, I thank you for a church of no compromise. I thank you for people of no compromise. People of love. And people that, that, that really love people and care about people. And, and, and don't want to see people taken advantage of. And don't want to see people taken uh, stolen from. And, and don't want to see lives uh, taken out. Innocent lives. We love. We love. And Lord, I just thank you. And I thank you for those that are, that are here. And I thank you for those that are online. And, and Father, you spoke tonight. I know it. And you hit some stuff tonight. And, and I, Lord, I, I, I believe. I believe in, in, in fruit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And we thank you, Father. And Father, we thank you that, that, that as, we, as we, no matter what, Lord, as, as we do your word, no matter what, Daniel was protected. Hallelujah. And he was provided for. And favor came. And promotion came. And you used him supernaturally. And he always knew what was ahead. And he was able to preserve things and people and nation and, that were around him. And this is what we want to be. Even other lives are, are held. Because, Father, we choose not to compromise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. And Lord, that, that this church, that we can be a light in this city, that we can be the, a candlestick in this city, Lord. That we can be a standard setter, Lord, for, for good, for righteousness, for love. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we're glad you could be with us tonight. If you don't have never received Jesus, and you don't know that heaven is your future, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Jesus died for your sin on the cross. He went to hell, and He raised from the dead. And the Bible says... You must be born again. Not Mark Irvin, the Bible says. That's the only way. Through Jesus. He's the only one that qualified to pay for our sin, that we could be in right relationship with God. And the Bible says that when we believe in our heart, that He raised from the dead, and we confess Him as the Lord of our life, that we're saved. Because we believe that He's the one that did the work, that we could be forgiven. He took our sin on the cross. And I want you to pray this prayer with me right now. Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you died for me on the cross. I believe you died on the cross. I believe you took my sin. I believe you took my sin. I believe you went to hell for me. I believe you went to hell for me. Jesus, I believe you raised from the dead. Jesus, I believe you raised from the dead. And I want to say thank you. And Jesus, I believe in you as my Lord and my Savior. Amen. Have the best day, night, whenever you watch this. If you're watching it on delay, we love you. And... Uh, if you want to send us an offering, all that information is there on the website. And you help us to go forward here in Germany as well as other nations. On Friday night, we're going to receive an extra offering. I told everybody in the church there's going to be some time during the week we're going to do that. And on Friday, we're going to do that. And um, we won't have anything on Saturday night. But we will be back tomorrow night. That'll be at 7 o'clock. And that's our normal church time. And then I'll be back on Thursday night to go forward in English only. We'll continue with the teaching that we've done on the book of Daniel. And then on Friday night, we're going to have a praise and worship night. And uh, we're gonna, there's something that we're going to do here in the church. I've already told everybody about it. And we're not going to be on live stream on that night. We won't be on the Internet on Friday night. We'll be here in the building. 
and, 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 and then we'll be back again on Saturday night and on Sunday. So we love you. You're God's best. Hey, send us some testimonies, those of you that are with us. I had, I had a one woman today that contacted me, and wow, she's got great, great testimonies to share just in the time that she's been with us in the last few days. So anyway, she's going to write that up. And she actually told me today, she said, it's too much to write. So I'm excited about that. And if you got a testimony, send it to us, and, and we'll read the testimonies out over the Internet as well. So we love you guys. And we'll see you tomorrow night, 7 o'clock.